Well, now concerning that situation in Japan, I'm now joined live from Vermont by Arnold Gunderson. He's an energy advisor at Fairwinds Associates, a corporation specializing in environmental, nuclear safety, and energy issues. Mr. Gunderson, thanks so much for joining us live here on RT. Now, we're reporting at the moment that there are suggestions that a partial nuclear meltdown is now underway. Can you explain to us what does that mean exactly? Um, yeah, what it means is that the nuclear fuel has become brittle uh, and that's evident because of the hydrogen explosions that have occurred that process makes nuclear fuel brittle and the pieces of nuclear fuel inside are about as big as my pinky that joint on my pinky they have all fallen into the bottom of the nuclear reactor there are thousands and thousands of those pieces in the center of those pieces is molten uranium um, it's, this is not a nuclear chain reaction, this is not a, a nuclear bomb. This is the radiation left over after the chain reaction has started. Um, this, this will go on for several months and um, the heat's got to be removed. Okay. And if you can't... Okay, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but you say this is not a nuclear bomb, but would not the effects be the same as a nuclear bomb if obviously it does reach meltdown and there is an explosion? the chemicals that are going to be released are similar actually the chemicals released from a radioactive chemicals released from a nuclear bomb disappear quicker than the radiation that uh, is released in a nuclear power plant the uh, fission spectrum in a nuclear power plant has longer lived radiation than the fission spectrum in a uh, in a bomb but are we looking at an apocalypse uh, i i read online reports on websites looking at international newspapers that word is used many times exaggeration or is that true well uh, my term is this is Chernobyl on steroids this is uh, this will be worse than Chernobyl exactly how much worse I don't know but um, it's pretty clear to me that uh, that it will be worse than Chernobyl you say will be do you think it's definitely gonna happen or do you think crisis could be averted no I don't think crisis can be averted uh, these can uh, the radiation exposures are so high on site that I don't think um, human beings can uh, can get into the areas that need to be accessed in order to put the fire um, to put the fires out and also to get water into the locations where the um, the, the heat is the highest. Worse than Chernobyl, so you I, say. So what will be the effects? Not just for those people in the vicinity who we understand are being evacuated in just a 12-mile radius, but what about Tokyo, where radiation levels are at, at 10 times above the norms at the moment, and beyond Tokyo, the atmosphere, the sea. The, the Asiatic region. Well, I think uh, you're, you're, if there's any lucky thing that's happened so far, it's the wind has mainly been blowing out to sea. If the wind turns to the to the south, I, I expect you will see radiation in Tokyo. I don't believe it'll be enough to evacuate Tokyo, but <clears throat> I think it would be prudent to take precautions and and uh, you know try to stay out stay out of the uh, of the plume. You know the Asiatic region. Uh, they're already beginning to reroute airlines because they're afraid of the, the radiation landing on the airplane and you know a, a plane from uh, from Tokyo to Moscow for instance will fly through that plume so it's it will definitely begin to affect Asiatic travel pretty but much I, I, immediately. I appreciate you're an, an energy advisor um, you're a specialist in environmental nuclear safety and energy issues but your message some people may say is scaremongering uh, you, can we be absolutely sure this is going to happen because it's a very different message that the people in Japan are getting from the government or do you think the government are not telling them the truth I don't think the government is lying I do think the government is not telling them everything it knows you know I studied Chernobyl and I was an expert witness on Three Mile Island and the government is always behind the eight ball on these things they are deliberately trying to downplay the amount of radiation being released you know we saw it in the Gulf of Mexico too with the oil spill they underestimated the amount of oil. That seems to be the way bureaucracies work. Let me just quickly ask you about the uh, International Atomic Agency. It's just reacting now to the crisis, promising to send a team to Japan. Many people will criticize it for not acting fast enough. Are those criticism, criticisms justified, do you think? Oh, absolutely. The International oh. Atomic Energy Commission estimated 5% of the core had failed. In fact, 70% had failed. So these guys have come in with low ball estimates for quite a few days now. Could it have done anything, though, the IAEA? Could it have physically helped before now? 
I don't think there's anything an expert can do to physically help at this point. I think these reactors are on runaway. Arnold Gunderson, very interesting to hear what you have to say. We appreciate your time. Energy advisor, okay. Fairwinds Associates, corporation specializing, as I say, in environmental, nuclear safety and energy issues, joining us live in Vermont. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. It doesn't matter because the, long before that, the, the volatile radioactivity would have been driv driven off by the heat. You don't need to go to a meltdown to, to release the radioactivity that we're concerned to, to the environment. So just the damage to the fuel rods, which could happen just by them being exposed to the air, is enough to release right. the radioactivity. Yeah. That's, that is the worst case scenario. Yes, the, the cladding around the uranium pellets, these, 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 uh, these metal zirconium tubes, mm -hmm. would burst. And at, at that point, the heat would drive off these, these uh, vol the boiling point of the, these elements that we're worried about is much below the temperature of the fuel, the, the fuel would have at that point, would drive it off into the atmosphere. And the other thing is that, uh, that in fact, is more than a crack in the, um, in this, in the roof of, the, of this facility. There are big holes in the walls that have been blown by, were blown by that, so, that hydrogen explosion. And so does that mean that with, with a crack to the roof but also big damage to the walls does that mean that any radiation that's being emitted from these damaged spent fuel rods is already just being emitted openly to the air pretty much i mean some of it might play it out on the you know the walls are cool and and uh and so some of it might might be plating out on the walls but there are big holes that it could that, that uh, a large fraction of it could escape from can the spent fuel rods at number four um be made safe. Do we know yeah. whether the damage done to that unit is the kind of damage that would prevent getting and keeping them submerged underwater from here on out? As far as we know, the, the, the pool itself is intact. Okay. So if you can get water in it uh, then, then and, and flood, flood it above the level of the, of the fuel rods, you would stop this process. Uh, what, if the, what if the pool is leaking? By, by the way, we, we you know, nobody, can, nobody knows what's going on up there. Because nobody can go up because the radiation levels are so high. The roof is still intact. It hasn't been blown off as, as with units number one and three. So, so, uh, so we're, we're sort of, we're hoping, ev guessing. everybody's guessing what's, you know, what the situation is there. But I think that it's a pretty good, uh, you know, deduction that the hydrogen was generated by the fuel, which means the hydrogen is generated at the same time the, the, the zirconium oxides, okay. uh, oxidizes. Basically, so as, the, as the sort of pipes break down, yeah. the metal rods break down, that, that releases the hydrogen? Basically what's happening is that the zirconium is taking the oxygen away from the H2O and leaving H2, which, which okay. then collects and, and to, to explosive levels. Which is if, um, if, as they are trying from as much distance as they can muster to get water onto those yeah. fuel rods, into that pool. If it turns out they are firing that, that water, in essence, into a colander instead of into a bowl, if there are leaks in that yeah. pool, then what? Then, you, then you, you really have a problem. You know, you can't prevent the, basically all the volatile uh, radionuclides, ra radioactivity from coming out, and, and uh, whatever fraction of it can go through those holes, you know, yeah. would go through those holes. And if, um, in terms of what we know about the capacity, what, about how many fuel rods would likely be um, inside that reactor, what sort of quantity are we talking about, about radioactivity? I've heard different numbers, ranging from 2 to, uh, to, to 15 reactor cores worth. No, 2, two to about 8 reactor cores worth. Um, uh, so if it can't be controlled, that's worst case scenario, eight reactors worth of radioactivity. Right. Right. And it's it would the, be released the into the atmosphere. Radioactivity. By the way, the fact that this has happened to unit number four is understandable and is consistent with the theory that, that it really did dry out uh, because the, the fuel from the unit number four was more, most recently discharged okay. and therefore was the hottest. hottest and therefore the, the, the water would have boiled off more rapidly from this. But units number five and six are behind, are coming along behind and, and will pose the same challenge. Could the fuel rods, if there is a problem in which they can't get these resubmerged because there's been too much damage to number four, putting aside the worries about five and six right now, could they be moved to an intact spent fuel pool somewhere else? I don't think so. I don't. I don't think they see any way in which people could uh, could actually manage to scoop that stuff up in, 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 a, 
you know, I think just people are struggling with how to get water in there. Yeah. It's so much easier to handle water, you know, uh, to get to get that in, yeah. to get this radioactive stuff out. Um, so I think you know it has to be dealt. So I hope that you're, that it, that the pool does hold water still. Yeah. There's, there's no nobody has suggested that it doesn't, okay. and that it's just a lack of of putting more water in that, that is a problem and, and that that's what they should work on. If they are, let's say that the, the pool is intact, they are able to fill it up, looking at number five and number six where the water levels they say are dropping, uh, are they going to be able to maintain some sort of cooling function there in a way that doesn't mean that this crisis is just indefinitely ongoing? Well, it'll, t it'll go on a long time. I mean, they will need a reliable source of water for these pools. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've thought you, know, you could take a hose up there with a helicopter or something like that. They've, yeah. uh, they, they, uh, they talk, they're talking about trying to shoot with, from a fire engine, you know, up through those holes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, part of the problem is actually that the, that the roof hasn't blown away. Yeah. So they, they don't have that kind of access. So they're trying to get yeah. in through the walls. Or through the roof, yeah. Through the crack yeah. that's in yeah. the roof, I see. Yeah. But, and, but to be clear, the people who are going to be doing this close-up work with what's going on right there are really are, are in grave danger themselves of radiation they are. exposure. I mean, and, and apparently it's so radioactive up there that they couldn't really go in there. They have to somehow do it from the outside. I mean, we've talked about helicopters or, or, or somehow shooting, trying to shoot a hose through that, that hole. And, and, uh, and I think they, they really need to get some kind of cameras in there to see, to see what's going on. As far yeah. as I can tell, they haven't yet. Frank von Hippel, a uh, nuclear physicist, co-founder of the Program on Science and Global Security at Princeton and co-chair of the International Panel on Fissile Materials. You are helping me understand this better, which does make me feel better, but this is a really bad situation. Thanks for helping us get Thank through you. it. Appreciate Thank it.